Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Parker. My name is Reverend Rick McCollum, and I'm glad that you've chosen to join us this morning for our Sunday celebration here online. Thank you for being part of us today. As we begin our service, I would like to start with lighting our unity candle. We light this candle representing the light of spirit that's in each and every one of us. As we know, God is within. And so as God is within each of us, we let that light shine through our lives. And that's part of what you'll be learning today as we share together. At Center for Spiritual Living Parker, we know that there are many ways to experience a relationship with the God of your understanding. So wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Know that you are welcome here, and we're glad that you're with us today. I'd like to remind all of us of our 30-year goal as a spiritual organization. So would you say this 30-year goal with me? The Center for Spiritual Living Parker is a global resource to help people discover and live their spiritual truth. And... The way we help people discover and live their spiritual truth is through understanding how spirit works in, as, and through each and every one of us. So we're glad you're here today. Enjoy this service, and we'll begin now with our music, followed by our meditation. One, two, three, four.
and now as you go within. Breathe out all that does not serve you and take a big breath in of love and light and peace. In your mind's eye, see a bright light above your head. Allow that light to come down through your crown into your head, bathing your brain and all your senses. Down your throat. into your chest. See that light fill your chest. More and more light fills up your lungs. Your heart is surrounded and fused by light. Molecules of blood, which are light filled, spread throughout your body. The light moves down your torso. Down your arms and your legs to the tips of your fingers and toes and beyond. permeate light from every pore of your body. And that's okay. For the light is endless. When you can endlessly allow it to stream down through your crown. Into your head and your throat. And this time, I'd like you to focus on your heart. For within your heart is planted the seed of divine love. It is one of your greatest gifts. For love is more powerful than any other force. Imagine in your mind's eye a child that you love. Or a pet. 
or your partner. Perhaps a parent or a grandparent. Feel that love. That love is not just there for that one being. That's only a tiny bit of the divine love that you possess in which you can share and spread. Know it. Sit with it and know that you have the power of great divine love. The power to change the world. Morning, CSL Parker. I'm Reverend Phil Tapp, Assistant Minister. It is my privilege today to be able to give today's Sunday talk. And so as part of what we, we've been doing, Reverend Rick has been uh, lighting a candle of unity. And I hope that you've been participating in the same thing at, at your home. So we have here our candle and I will go ahead and light this up. Knowing that as this is a symbol that we are divinely connected, we are, we are always in that sense of oneness with each other. And so as I go about today's talk, I am grateful knowing that, uh, that, that all is well and that we are connected. So thank you for joining us today in this time and um, we'll get right to it. I hope to be able to offer you a, a, a an interesting talk today. It's certainly been interesting for me putting it together. Um, you know, and it's, I want you to know that the talk and this month's themes come to us from the, the CSL Ministers Council. So they have put together, you know, put together a good working definition, a work, op, work of operation for us here. And, and we've been utilizing that. So uh, the theme this month has been listen to your heart. And the theme this week is the great work of your life. And some of the things that will be explored during this are the idea of what is Dharma, discovering one's life purpose, uncovering what is one's sacred work, gifts, talents, and contribution to the world, because we each have them, and what is our zone of genius. So as we go about this today, <clears throat> um, those are the topics that we're going to be looking at. And Dharma in and of itself is kind of a, it's an interesting concept. It is really this idea that there's a life purpose behind each and every one of us, that we have something that within us needs to be expressed. And that is all due to the fact that we are part of the great one. We are one with all that is, and that our individuation of who and what it is that we are is, is what is meant to be expressed. And it's summed up very well in this nice quote. We'll begin today with this quote from Ernest Holmes, which this appears from Love and Law. That every, th every living thing is in every soul. Sorry, let me start there. That spirit is in every living thing, is in every soul, latent, simply waiting to be brought forth and come through the avenue that we express. It is to bring out these great realities of life and happiness, health, love, and power to supply these things that make life worthwhile. That make life worthwhile. So we're here to express. That's what we're here to do. We're here to, to try on life 
to try many different things and to see what it is that suits us, to see where it is that we are called to express and, you know, what has been going on for this month and perhaps for many of us, even in this time of pandemic, has been this idea of really learning to get connected with the information that we have in here. The information that we have in here. Because here's the thing that's interesting is that we, you know, we can have all kinds of ideas about what it is that we are to do, who it is that we are, but a lot of times it isn't until <clears throat> we get the antithesis of whatever it is that we have being presented to us that we have you know, work to do in the heart. Because when we talk about conscious or cognitive dissonance, some of it goes on up here, but more so where it really goes on is right here in the heart. So with the practice that we've been, um, that Reverend Rick has been asking us to participate in over the past two weeks, and even longer than that actually, is, you know, our own spiritual practice will begin to give us those answers of Dharma, even in asking the question of what is mine to do? And then we will have things that likely need to be reconciled. And what I mean, you know, with Alicia's song today that was presented, the music team, reconciliation is the perfect, the absolute perfect uh, word to be using with this, because with reconciliation, what it means is that we reconcile the truth with our heart, not so much with our head. And in learning to listen to our heart, you know, we, we know when we're doing it. We know when the, the idea is, is that our, our heart just isn't in it. It's not, you know, we don't have that oomph. We don't have that desire behind it. And a lot of times, some of the things that hold us back within all that are, you know, potentially beliefs of I'm not good enough or or that other, you know, that somebody else is doing it this way and it's always been done this way and this is how things need to happen. And, you know, I could never do that kind of thing. But I would invite us to look at the idea that maybe with this quote from Ernest Holmes, this one is from this thing called You, which by the way is pretty much my, that's my favorite Ernest Holmes book. It was the first one that I read and it really, it turned me on to the science of mind philosophy. So. If, if you're out there and you haven't picked up a copy of this thing called you, please don't miss this classic work. So here's the quote. You exist that divine feeling, fire, imagination, and creativity may be expressed through you. The spirit comes to you with a new and fresh creativity. You need not ask what others have done or how they have done it. Be yourself and express life as you find it. Never imitate, trust the self, find the self in God, and God in the self. So in participating in life, and whatever it is we choose to focus on and to, and to manifest in our lives, that is God in action. Now, the thing that's interesting with this is that it could be that even though we're doing this, we may not be fulfilling our dharma. And how do we know that we are fulfilling our dharma? Well, that may look like having that reconciliation with the heart. So part of what we need to be looking at here today is, is moving into our zone of genius. And this, this work of the zone of genius comes to us from Dr. Gay Hendricks, who wrote this book called The Big Leap. And this, this uh, concept actually exists within a, another framework, which was, I, I was actually introduced to it via CSL ethics class, and it appears in the book called The 15 Commitments to Conscious Leadership. And the idea here is, is that we are either, um, we are either excelling towards something or we are not excelling towards something. And that is, that's kind of a, a you know, it's a, a, a above or below the line is the way that they would term it in this book, is that if I'm operating in the field of my dharma, I'm above the line. If I'm if I, anything less than that, I'm kind of operating below the line, the baseline of, of being able to be who it is that I'm called to be. And we have many zones, right? We talk about the, you know, there's the zone of genius and we have other zones as well. And all of these are zones of expression, of us, Looking, looking to find ways for spirit to express through us because it's always expressing through us. It's just kind of, we measure it a little bit by our results, right? And the way that this looks is imagine a pyramid, okay? Imagine a pyramid. And at the top up here, we've got zone of genius. 
Just below that zone, we have a, a strip that is the zone of excellence. Just below that zone, we have one that is the zone of competence. And then just below that, right there at the bottom, we have the zone of incompetence. Now, it shouldn't take much work to figure out that the zone of incompetence, that this is an area where we really don't want to be, right? Not only do we not, you know, are we not getting the results that we'd like to have a lot of times out of life, what we are ending up getting is we get ourselves a, uh, a, you know, we're mired in an area where we don't feel good about being in it. And all of us know what it means to be incompetent at something, right? Like, let's say, for example, one of the things that I have given up over the course of time has this, is this idea that I can somehow be an auto mechanic. Um, I have not, <laughs> it, it has been proven to me over and over and over again that I am much better off not operating in that zone of incompetence. And mainly the reason is, is that it steals time away from what it is that I'm really good at. If I want to move into my zone, you know, a different zone up above there, you know, then I want to be able to let go of some of those things. So that's part of what we need to be looking at doing in life is letting go of, of what it, these things that no longer serve us or things that are, are bothersome or irksome or irritating, right? And so then that would allow us to move up into this zone of competence. And we all have areas, you know, where we understand where this is about too. This is the idea that there, you know, there's many people who can do the same kinds of things in this area, you know, and this boils down to, you know, maybe you can drive, maybe you can, you can cook, maybe you can clean, maybe, you know, basic manual labor tasks, things that we go about in our daily lives that we can all be competent at. And then there's other areas, you know, when we get up into the zone of excellence, which is this strip up here, that what, what we have with that is that this gets us into an area where we are, we, are in, we are now in an area where we are beginning to separate ourselves from, from the rest of the pack in the respect that this is, what I mean by this is that we have got into an area where we can make a living, We've got into an area where we begin to see some of our unique qualities come out, where we have separated ourselves a little bit from people who are competent. You know, we're in, you know, we're now into another level where we can be very good at something. And the thing that's funny with the zones of competence and excellence is that they are often very, very comfortable areas to be. Often very comfortable areas to be. This could be an area where we're living in what we might call the second kingdom of uh, all my needs are met. I, I know probably at this point we know how to consciously use the law of creation, right? To move from that competence to excellence. We know that our power of thought is creative. We know that we have a universal partner at our side. We know that we have um, a, perhaps a community of people that can help us. We also know that, that we can... Uh, that we can do this, right? We, we've, we've shifted our belief system away from this idea of competence into excellence. So there's a little bit of a jump there. And even at this point, the sad portion of this is, is that we may not actually be fulfilling our dharma. We may not be fulfilling our, our soul's calling, our, our life purpose, even at that point. It could very well be that we are likening it to the idea that we really enjoy being comfortable much more than we do for being, um, you know, taking a risk and moving into an area that would help us to cultivate our zone of genius. And it's, it's interesting. I, I have to share this with you. Um, when I was taking the ethics class, which wasn't really too long ago, it's been part of the CSL affiliation process for me. And <laughs> uh, we were presented with that book, you know, the 15 commitments of conscious leadership. And our instructor asked us for the first class to bring to the class and also to write a, a summary paper based upon which of these commitments did we feel was going to be the most difficult for us to fulfill. And how is it that this group might be able to support us in gaining, you know, in gaining some clarity surrounding how those issues might be achieved, how that commitment might be, might be reinforced or, or sought after. 
it should come as no surprise to you folks that the law, it, it acting in reverse a little bit, presented me with this that is manifest in today, which is this. My difficulty was, how am I going to move into my zone of genius? How odd that within a few short weeks, I would be presented with this as a topic to present to CSL. Because I too can have difficulty in moving into my zone of genius. I know that what these things may take, but the difficulty I think is, is that how hard is it for us to make that final leap? The final leap. We trust God, but do we trust it? How much do we really trust God? Do we trust this creative process? Do we trust it to really be able to, to mess around with the things that we find comfortable? Because it is extremely alluring to stay in these areas where we may excel. We may be doing great, great work. We may be doing some of these things, but still be kind of on the inside thinking, man, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And if we go to that area of being able to reconcile, right? Being able to reconcile, which really is this idea of conscience. The conscience, I don't believe, lives up here. I believe the conscience in us lives in, in our hearts, right? That's where we know, am I following what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing what I'm meant to be called to do? Which all of these things translate and they come to us through the idea of our own personal spiritual practice and taking the time to, to do things like meditate, to pray, envision, and to ask even those questions on a daily basis of what is mine to do? What is mine to do? Because when we see those things we're getting closer to fulfilling our dharma, which the thing with dharma is even, I'm going to backtrack back to that a little bit, because when we think about it in terms of specificity, right? Well, I think to some extent we kind of lose the overall overarching picture. Dharma, in my view, is much more about the idea of content than it is about form, okay? So when I think about dharma in terms of what that would look like, I think about it in terms of, Am I doing my utmost to fulfill my mission of seeding love wherever I go, right? Like that's my life purpose is what would love do? What would love have me be? What would, what would love have me express? And so when I begin asking those kinds of questions, that's coming from spirit. And then the Dharma is worked out in the situations that tend to come my way right? So in committing to move toward that zone of genius, what is likely to happen? What is likely to happen? Well, it sure seems to me that, that we would necessarily be catapulted perhaps into some situations that would help us to become that which we had set out to be, right? We will be, the law will bring us situations that may not be very pleasant in order to help us cultivate that dharma into coming into existence, right? I was participating in a metaphysical Bible class this past weekend with Reverend Guy Williams, who said some of the most interesting stuff I'd ever heard, which he was talking about faith. And what he was said about faith was he asked us, well, what was the opposite of faith? And here's what was interesting. I, I had always been told, I had always believed and that the opposite of faith is fear, right? Being afraid. He put it in different context for me and shifted me greatly that day, a huge paradigm shift. That what it really is, the opposite of faith is certainty. Now, how does that fly in the face of everything that we talk about here in Science of Mind? Because we're supposed to know, we're supposed to be certain, we're supposed to have, <clears throat> excuse me, we're supposed to have everything at our disposal and know that the truth is being exuded. However, I do believe that in order to make that big leap, it is quite probable, quite probable that we will be catapulted into an area of fear into an area of thinking that perhaps this isn't going to work out. Man, it is what we would call uncertainty. Uncertainty is where faith is born. And that is what is the gift of where we're at right now in this time. 
We are in some uncertain times. We are in some uncertain area right here, which these are what help us to cultivate us making the big leap. Gay Hendricks puts it like this in, in this quote, which is from the big leap. The goal in life is not to attain some imaginary ideal. It is to find and fully use our own gifts. To find and fully use our own gifts. Fully is the key. Fully is the key word there. And that means that we will necessarily have to deal with some of these things coming up. So what we may be called to do at the heart level may put us into a position where we have to work through all these zones to get up to where we're actually a genius level. We cannot make demonstrations of being at a genius level without having gone through all those steps of being incompetent. So I want to offer you a little bit of a tool today as far as how, how it is that you may be able to begin to measure where it is that your dharma is asking you to go and where it is that you might like to, you know, where it is that might propel you more toward that zone of genius because it is climbing a pyramid. We may not get to that point in that act of perfect faith tomorrow. But what I can say is this, is that there is an exercise which is very helpful. I would invite you to take a little bit of a daily inventories to some of the activities that you went about over the course of the day. In listing each activity, I'd like you to put an arrow next to the side of it, you know, and use an up arrow for areas where, you're at, where you felt your energy go up as you were participating in the activity. Use a side arrow for things that were ambivalent, and perhaps use one that was a, a down arrow where it was something that was a drain. Because we can allow this, this can be a form of us for, to understand where it is that we are headed with our time and our activity. And then we can make the agreement if we see a pattern over the course of time that, man, what I'm doing right here really isn't working for me. So we can do things differently. We can do the three Ds. We can dump it, we can delegate it, or we can do it differently. Those three things. So we have that opportunity to do those. So... That's one way to take some inventory to begin to move up this pyramid. However, in getting to the point of doing the, the great work of our life, we are very much put into an era, you know, an era where I begin to think of uh, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, moving from 1989 with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, where Indiana Jones' purpose has been this time is to find the Holy Grail, right? And so there's this scene in there where... Indy has to take an, an act of faith and he has to step out over a step out over what is seemingly a chasm, a chasm of death, right? And he's, he recognizes that what it is is it's a leap of faith. It is a leap of faith. And so he with mustering everything that he can, knowing that it's gotten to this point, knowing that this is the case, he sticks one foot out and is about to step into thin air when he puts his foot down on a bridge that happens to be made of the same rock as the surrounding landscape. See, God showed up when Indy decided to go ahead and do that. And that is the case for us when we move into our greater yet becoming. That is the case. That's what happens for us. With God as your partner, you cannot fail. You cannot fail. We are one with all that is, and as a result of this, when we step out bravely, step out boldly, declaring that this is who I am, God shows up. With God as your partner, you cannot fail. I would like to offer you an affirmation for this week that can help seed some of these things in coming to fruition for you. It is easy, it's simple. So grab a pen and paper and write this down. Today, I answer the call to discover, liberate, and express my divine genius. Today, I answer the call to discover, liberate, and express my divine genius. Thank you for joining us today. I look forward to seeing how your divine genius shows up. I will close today with this poem 
from Ernest Holmes. It's a prayer, but it's a poem. It is called The Call. It appears in the original 1926 edition of the Science of Mind text. It can be found at the end of the glossary and is just before the index. This I saw, or else some greater presence made it known to thee. The universe is filled with life, the earth, the sky, the sea, and teemed with intelligence, with majesty and might. Deep within me some subtle inner sight beholds and sees, comprehends and knows the all. No fears, no falters, but answers the divine call to be as one beyond the bonds of time and space, to overcome the bondage of the human race, and to leap with trust, undaunted and free, into the deeps of that infinite sea, whose waters, calm, are ready to receive those who in simple faith believe. For our offering time today, I invite you to donate however it's comfortable for you. If you'd like to donate online, you can do so by clicking on the box at the top of the screen, or you can go to our website and donate through the website. You can also donate via Zelle, or if you're more comfortable sharing a check and mailing that in, feel free to mail that to our TEC building address. It's shown on the screen for those of you that want to use that method. And I sincerely thank you for the way that you continue to support us as a spiritual center. Thank you. And now it's time for our offering affirmation. Will you say this with me? As together we know, thank you, God, for the prosperity of my life. I give knowing your abundance is flowing to me freely. All of my needs are met, and I am grateful. And so it is. And now, our offering song.
Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, and I hope and trust that you have enjoyed our service. As we prepare now to leave and end this time together, I would like to offer our benediction, followed by our closing song. Will you pray with me? Know that as you leave this fellowship, you leave guided, guarded, and protected, held in the embrace of the divine. You are a child of God. You are an expression of the light of spirit that is shining forth from your heart into the world. The work that you have to do in the world is blessed. And I speak a word of blessing on each and every one of us, knowing that as we open ourselves to spirit, spirit is faithful and provides so much guidance, so much help, so much joy that it carries us into that life that we desire, that highest and best life for each and every one of us. I release my word, knowing that this is accomplished. We are safe. We are whole. We are in love. And so it is. Namaste. Yeah.